While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. To know or know is a very common expression that we use. We might say, well, I know the answer to your question, or I know what time of day it is, or I know you. And to know something means to encounter it, to, to have some sort of interaction with that thing. Something also that is out there besides ourselves. We know something outside of ourselves. And we have this encounter, we have this ability to know something else through our senses, through our five senses. We get the ability and we have the power to know the world around us. And those senses each give us different levels of knowledge. Um, but in particular, the physical senses allow us to know something more closely, more intimately. For example, the touch between a mother and a child is one of the most intimate and beautiful connections between two people. Or the knowledge or the touch between two lovers, like husband and wife, allows them to really know each other. Or to see your friend and know that they are suffering and to touch their shoulder to comfort them can be very, very powerful. To know and to come to touch is a very powerful reality. And it's a reality that Christ wants to have with us and for us today. Our Lord wants to come to know us. Our God wants to come to know us, to be with us in a very intimate and personal way. He wants to touch you, to touch the most intimate parts of your life, to be with you. We see Jesus do this today with the apostles. There they are. He appears to them and they are scared. And he says, no, touch and see that I am with you. There's a very physical reality here that Jesus is making known to them, making himself known to them through his very physical reality, through his body. He is indeed not a ghost. A ghost could not eat fish and bread. No, only a physical human being can eat something, can come to know something, can come to know them. And our Lord wants to get to know his disciples. He wants them to know his resurrected self. He wants each of us to know his resurrected self. And at first, this can be very scary. The disciples we hear were scared because knowledge of something unlocks a lot of power. It unlocks for us also the power of truth. We can then know that something 
is true or false. Know that something is right or wrong. We can now know someone else and how we should or shouldn't respond to them. Our knowledge of someone else, you know, can make a situation better or it can make a situation worse. If we find a friend or a loved one who is suffering and we know that they are suffering, you know, we can comfort them, we can touch them, we can be with them. Or we can make it worse, we can push them away, we can drive them out, we can create a physical separation between ourselves which can cause a real pain. The Pharisees did this with Christ. In their ignorance or in their lack of knowing, their lack of knowledge, they pushed Christ away. They crucified him. They beat his body. They flogged him. And then they threw him away into a tomb thinking that he was gone and dead. They did something very wrong. But in God's infinite wisdom and goodness, he can take even the greatest wrong and make it into something that is a right. And this example of the Pharisees here is sort of that example from all time of, of all of us pushing God away with our sins. From Adam and Eve, when they first pushed apart from each other. Those two who knew each other so well, pushed apart from themselves and pushed apart from God in their sins. But God wants to wipe that away. He wants to undo that. He says, be cleansed of your sins, repent and believe. God wants to give to us, give to us today, his healing touch. He wants to encounter us in our daily lives, to encounter you in your daily lives, to give to you that healing touch, to wipe away your sins, to wash off the sin of your body and your soul, and to bring you back to himself, to bring you back into his Embrace because he loves you, because he wants to envelop you, because he wants to touch you and your life. Of course, the way that we most intimately interact with God is through the breaking of the bread, is through the Eucharist. God left us his very body and soul so that we can encounter him, so we can touch him daily, regularly, either through spending time in his presence in Eucharistic adoration, which of course we have regularly available here at the church, or by actually receiving him into our own bodies through the reception of the Eucharist at Mass, to be very touched by God himself, to be joined with him and with his body in a very real and physical way. This is the radicalness of God and how close he wants to come to each of us, how much he wants each of us to know him and for us to know him and him to know us. And so spend some time this Easter. Get to know God. Allow him to come and to touch you, to touch your life and to be with you. And it takes time to touch him and to know him.